Hi, it's Joe here from Joe's Country Junction, and I am welcoming you to my sewing room today for a Sew with Joe episode. Um, what I've got going on today is this. I'm going to flip the camera around, and then I'm going to show you just a second. Okay, here is the quilt I'm working on next. There's my little dog Izzy down there. She is guarding the quilt so no one steals it. Um, this is uh, a Bonnie Hunter quilt top. It was called Virginia Bound and I did uh, string piecing. The block is actually like right here and then um, I did the string piecing for it but this is probably about as far as the quilt's gotten. I um, the original quilt has a different border and I wasn't fond of that and I was just trying to think of something to do to make it my own. Well it's sat here for a long 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 time and I'm finally getting to it and the reason why I'm getting to it is if you've watched my um my improv video where I showed how to make letters and I was making my grandson Anders baby quilt um you saw that I was using men's shirts well, now everybody in my daughter Calissa's family has a quilt with made, that's made from men's shirts, except for her husband, Craig. Well, I have this one in my UFO bucket, and it needs to get finished. So I have decided I'm going to um, use this, and this will be Craig's quilt. And so what I'm going to do is out here, I've decided that I'm going to add a little narrow border right along the side, and then I'm gonna make some of those improv letters and personalize the quilt for Craig. So why don't you come join me and I'll just be making some improv letters and we can chat and hang out while I do that. And we can sew together and have a regular Sew with Joe. I guess it's a Sew with Joe and Izzy. Izzy, hey Iz. It'll be a Sew with Joe and Izzy. Well, let me think. It's, yep, wait, just wait. Here's my pile of mass here that I'm going to be sewing from. So I guess it's a sew with Joe, with Izzy, and Rosie. So I'll meet you back at the sewing machine. I'm at my sewing machine. I'm so excited. I can finally do just a regular sew with Joe. It doesn't have to be a video that I'm um, teaching you how to do anything. It can just be a video that I can sew and we can chat. Um, I know a lot of you say that you enjoy this style of video because you often sew along with me or stitch along with me while I do this style of video. And so um, I showed you my quilt that I was going to be working on. I'm just going to add letters to the outside of it. The other quilts that I've made have all had red letters and red is the accent color, but this quilt doesn't scream red to me. So I had to come up with something different and I dug around in my solid print fabric and I found this fabric and I think it's perfect because I'm going to kind of focus on blues as I make this quilt rather than reds and that's going to be a fun change for me because I'm just so used to working with reds. I do have some leftover pieces that um, I'm going to incorporate into the border. Um, here's some of them. Um, the blue doesn't uh, fight that color and the blue doesn't enhance that color. So I'm just I'm happy and content to make my letters out of this color. But here's a few things that I have left. I'll add all of these to the border. Um, I think that there might be a few others here. Yep. Um, this, this. I'll just randomly add these into the border of what I'm doing for Craig. And so a long time ago, if you've been a long-term blog reader of mine, and if you're not familiar with my blog, my blog is joescountryjunction.com. I've been blogging since 2009. And so that's quite a while to be blogging. And um, I really enjoy blogging. I um, have two posts. I have two blog posts on the blog every day. And um, I just kind of chit chat about uh, quilting, um, cross stitch, my family, recipes, whatever I've got going on, my foster dogs, whatever I've got going on, I just share all of that with you. So um, what I'm sharing with you today is that quilt. Um, but on my blog, a long time ago, if you are a follower, you know that I made a quilt um, that was the improv style for my daughter, Calissa. I made it back for her when she was in high school. And along the outside, I put her name, Calissa Georgia, and then I wrote the words, Dream Big because she had um, big aspirations at the time. And so I was just trying to be supportive of her aspirations. So now I have Craig's quilt to make. 
And so I've been trying to figure out what to put on his quilt. And so Calis, I, I called my daughter Calis and I said, what do I put on Craig's quilt? Because Craig's her husband, so she should know if I don't know. And um, she said, well, why don't you put his name? And, you know, on my name, on my quilt, you put Calissa Georgia. Why don't you put Craig Alexander? And so that's perfect. I'm going to go with Craig Alexander, but I do want some other saying on the other, on another side of the quilt or another portion of the quilt. And I just don't know what that's going to be yet. But then I finally decided I don't have to know right now. All I have to do right now is make the letters Craig Alexander. And so that's being his middle name's Alexander. I have uh, plenty enough letters to make with that. So I'm going to start out making letters today. I'm not going to do it as a tutorial session because I've already done that. And if you want to see and learn exactly how I make the letters, you can go back and watch some of those other YouTube videos that I've made. But for now, I'm just going to be chatty and do a sew with Joe. I'm so excited to be doing one again. Yeah. Um, so with Joe's are really fun in that um, I get to chat with you all um, and some are tutorial form and some are just, you know, hey, hang out with me while I sew because I need a friend. <laughs> so that's what we're working on today is just hanging out with Joe. So I'm going to just pitter patter along here and start making some blocks. I have my... Um, little travel iron set up over here. I've got my camera kind of at a different angle and not straight on because if I put it straight on, I've got a door right here and the door kind of uh, glares and kind of is causing a little bit of a problem. So um, I'm just dinking around making letters and that's what I'm going to work on. I've kind of been busy. I caught an awful cold. I'm so bummed I caught a cold. I'm I've not even had it that long, and I'm already very sick of it. I, I just hate getting a cold. Um, uh, this morning, I was to the vet, and I took my um, foster dog to the vet. He had uh, back dew claws that needed to be removed, and so I took him to the... He had those removed... <laughs> some time ago, but after he got those removed, um, he had stitches in his dew claws and then I couldn't, um, he couldn't be adopted yet because he had to have those dew claws taken care of. I don't know why, but it's, it seems I started with, um, Alexander and not, and not Craig. <laughs> so I don't know why I did that, but that's okay. It'll work. Um, I've got a new bunch of scraps out. Um, I had to kind of refresh my scraps. I used most of them up when I was making my grandson's quilt. And now I'm busy making Craig's quilt and I got to figure out what I have for scraps here. <clears throat> I wasn't quite ready for making another quilt right away because usually I collect scraps for a little while and then I make a quilt after that. I'm going to give this a little iron. I usually don't make um, these improv quilts back to back, so I have time to collect new scraps. And then I um, have new fresh scraps every time I sew, but this time around I uh, didn't have um, enough time in between making Anders quilt, which I just finished this morning. I got it off the long arm and um, finish that up this morning and so then now I'm already at this quilt and there was no time in between to replenish scraps so I went and dug and tried to find a different basket of scraps and it, this one doesn't seem to be like the best bucket because it has quite a few um, scraps that are um, pink colors and I don't really want pink in Craig's quilt. I need something more like this. Oh, I don't know why this big of a piece got in there, but I'm just fine that it did because I could use this big, nice, big piece. Um, I think I'm just going to take it and rip off a strip. Rip a strip. Okay. I have so many UFOs going on right now. I've got several projects that, you know, all need some attention. And this... UFO that I'm 
got hanging out over here. I think I have been... I was trying to remember when I think I made that Virginia bound quilt and I just, I'm having trouble remembering. Um, if you're unfamiliar, that quilt is in Bonnie Hunter's book, um, Scraps and Shirt Tales, I believe. And I believe it's in book one of that because she has two different books with the same name. And I believe it's in book one. One thing I didn't do that I can already see I'm going to regret is I didn't bring up some water. That was kind of dumb because this cold is making me kind of dried out. I didn't really intend to film a video and then I got up here and I thought, hey, you could film a video. And then, you know, here I am now suddenly filming a video. That's kind of how my life works sometimes. I'm kind of um, very... Uh, I don't want to say scatterbrain because it's not scatterbrain because it's been on my agenda or my wants or my plans to do a video all with you, but it just hadn't happened yet. And... Okay, I'm going to feed this one through. <laughs> yep, that tickle's going to get me. I'm probably going to have to stop filming and go get a drink. At least have a water up here with me. We'll see. Okay. I'm trying to get an A and an L made at the same time. When I shot the videos the first time around and show, to show you guys how to do this, I told you that a lot of times when I'm uh, making this style of letters, I make uh, a couple different letters at the same time. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing it more how I do it when I'm not um, trying to film a video and not trying to explain how to do it. Okay. I'm trying to position that piece. Okay. We almost have an L done. I'm just adding little pieces to it as I go. It seems pretty much everybody in the family has caught this cold that I have. I think it originally came from my daughter Calissa's house, but I can't say for sure. Okay, we got our A going. I thought, here, I'll give you a sneak peek. Like, he's got some trimming that has to be done yet. You can see better here. So there's my A going. And I got the L in the machine, and so I'll probably start trying to figure out my E so I work on um, more than one letter at the same time. I like to do that. Um, I'm so glad that um, I figured out how to do this because I really enjoy making these letters and doing this style of project. <coughs> oh, that cough is going to be the death of me, maybe. We'll see. I hope not. I hope to stick around longer than that. If I can outlast my cold, that'll be awesome. Okay, right now I think this L that I'm working on is a little too tall, so I'm just going to wax them off. I don't want my letters to be quite as big as they were in, um, in Gannon's quilt. I like them kind of big, but not too big. So I just look and chop and look and chop and try to figure out what I want to do. It's a beautiful day out, so after, um, those of you who don't know, um, I, my, I've got a couple, um, kids that get off the bus here after school. Well, usually it's four. It's two of my grandsons and two that are, um, two girls that are a little bit older 
than them, a uh, first grader and a third grader that are family friends. And I um, watch them after school while we're waiting for mom to get done with work. Oh, I don't know what they got going on here. Oh, I know what it is now. That sh the piece of shirt had uh, the little button piece that, um, oh, like the interfacing behind where they sew the button on. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Did you see me almost go like this? Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm always busy putzing. So I have other UFOs here too. Um, a lot of people have been waiting for me to get to um, a sh uh, the, the Schmores quilt. I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, I'm hoping soon. We'll just have to be patient and see. I kind of didn't really plan on doing the quilts I'm doing right now, but while I've got all of this mess out, it just makes sense for me to finish doing the, to finish the quilt, this quilt too. Because if I pack it away, I just, I know I won't get back to it. I think you all can understand that a little bit, that it seems like once you pack something away, you don't just grab it back out again very quick. I like to keep the momentum going as long as I have any kind of momentum at all. Okay, we're getting a little closer on this L. Um, I don't know how many letters I'll get done. I got a little bit of time I can sew with you, not too long. Um, after the bus comes today, my plan is to, it's really nice here. Um, I live in Northeast Iowa. It's really nice here today. Um, the sun is shining. Um, it's not cold. It's supposed to be rainy later on in the week. So if I get a chance at all, I would really like to get out and, um, give a little walk to the dogs. I have a foster right now. Her name is Susie. She is a... She's 15 years old. She looks very much like a beagle, but she's her ears are a little different. Uh, her ears uh, kind of stand up a little bit more, so I kind of am just guessing that she's probably crossed with some kind of terrier breed. So I just... I just call her a Beagle Terrier, and um, I'm guessing that's probably what she is. But she is 15 years old. She was an owner surrender. Um, her owner passed away, and um, he was elderly, and he um, passed away. And so then his dog Susie's looking for a home. I completely have my L done. So yay, one done. Um, so Sh Susie has been looking for a home. Um, we did, we have found her a potential home, but the problem is, is that um, she's got to have some dental work done before she can go um, permanently be with her new home. So I'm super excited about that. But Susie um, is very overweight. Um, she, uh, as I said, is 15 years old and she the vet suggested that she lose five pounds. Right now she's 27 and a half pounds and the vet said that she'd like to see her close to just over 20 and about 22 pounds maybe. So Miss, Miss uh, um, Susie needs to walk to kind of work off some of that weight. So I'm hoping today after the grandkids and the after school kids, Believe that I can just get out and uh, give Susie and my other dog is just a little walk. Um, it probably won't be too far because being Susie's 15, um, her going on a walk is kind of a lot for her. She does a really good job walking, but um, if a mile is probably enough for her, and that's that, that won't take us too long. I'm still working on a few of the letters. I live 
in town and in town here. Our town is just tiny. We only have a, a population of like 250. And so being the population is so small, we just, we don't have any walking trails or anything like that. Um, not even all of the houses have sidewalk. So we can't really walk on the sidewalk. So instead we just walk on the street and it works. <laughs> It's, we're not a fancy town, so we just walk right on the street. Okay, I'm working on my E too. My A and my E. Okay, some trimming I gotta do here. Looks like my letters are getting big again. That happens. It's okay. Okay, I'm working on my A here. I gotta put a top and a bottom on it yet, but otherwise my A is done, but we'll see what we can find to put on the top and bottom. Okay, this one looks big enough. I'm doing the same thing that I did with um, Anders quilt. I just make the letters and then I add a little border onto them and then once I'm all done I'll trim them down to size. And I just trim a little bit right off here. I was really lucky. I was able to um, get some cross stitching time in this weekend, which was awesome. And I was able to make a little progress on a couple of the projects I've been doing. Um, I've been working on a Brenda Gervais project. And it's called Keeper of the Pins and they're all sewing theme related. Um, little pin cushions to cross stitch so I was able to get some time in and work on that and that was awesome just what I needed um, being I had my cold I used my cold as an excuse for a little bit extra stitching time that's one good thing about um, having a cold or being sick <laughs> you can always use your cold as an excuse to that is if your cold isn't too bad. So far I've been kind of lucky my cold, my cold hasn't been too bad. Okay. I've been making these improv letters kind of for, oh, I don't know, a long time really it feels like. I, but as I said, I made my first quilt with these improv letters back in, oh boy. I think Calissa was in ninth grade, 10, probably 13 years ago. I'm just going to take a wild guess and guess at that. So I've been doing it for quite a while. Uh, some people watch me make them and then they're like, how do you do that? Or why do you do that? Well, I just like it. I like the whimsiness of, of how the letters look. So I'm going to trim a couple things off here. They'll get trimmed up more before they all get sewn together anyway, so that's okay. But I'm happy to say we have an A done too. So we're working on Alexander, so we have A-L done. Or I've got the E under the machine, so I should probably do the X. I just, I, I'll be honest, I hate doing Xs. Just hate it. But... We'll figure it out. I don't want to get too um, bothered by it all. Because if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it for me. So I got to just buck up and do it. Okay, we need some fabric. My husband always really liked this style of quilting because he thought that it was more um, oh, utilitarian, I guess, or 
more how quilting was probably meant to be. And I just like it because I like it. I don't know that there's any reason for sure why I like it. Okay. There's so many different ways to make an X and I'm just gonna make mine this way. I don't even remember how I made it when I did the video on how to make the letters because um, I was on video and was just talking and had to figure it out as I went. So we'll see how this goes this time. <laughs> okay. Let me see. How did I make that X? This is kind of what I do when I do this. I just kind of guess. Um, let me do this. And then I'll probably cut it. It makes more sense to me. <laughs> So anyway, my job is to get my foster dog to lose weight. So we've been walking and it's been going pretty good. Um, she actually walks pretty fast when we do walk, which I very much appreciate because um, I like to walk myself to get a little bit of exercise and it's no fun if you have got a dog that's going super, super slow. But of course I'm understanding because Susie is 15 and so she's not gonna have a crisp walk to her. I'm really hoping for a good day um, or a good week of quilting. I don't have a lot of other plans on tap, and so I'm secretly hoping that I could even actually get this quilt maybe finished this week. I don't know. That might be pretty ambitious for me to think that that could happen, but boy, I really sure would like it. I'm just so ready to have another project done. I always try to, well, I have a like a little goal of at least getting a quilt done a month. I really like to get a little bit more than that done, but if I get one quilt done a month, I'm pretty happy. But if I could get two quilts done, or three quilts done, I would be even happier. So I'm gonna call my E done. So there's my E. So I, we have A L E. Okay. Then we need this X, and then we need another A. Okay. I'm gonna start laying stuff out for another A. I was debating about switching and going to lowercase letters, but. And I think I'll just stick with uppercase letters. I kind of do this. I kind of like work on a couple letters at a time and I feed them through as I go. So I'm working on my X. I'm just thinking out loud to you all. And so I have this much done and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it. <clears throat> and add the other piece in. See if that will work. Well, I know. <clears throat> I'm relatively sure it will work. Getting things lined up. Sometimes I myself put off walking or exercising, so it's been really good for me to have Susie here because it's like, if I just feel like if I have to do it for somebody else, I'm more likely to actually do it. So um, being, I have to take uh, Susie for a walk 
then that means I'll make myself walk too, which is not all bad. I do have a friend with that I walk with some. Um, we're both very busy, so we don't get to walk that often, but we do get to walk some. And I appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to try to get this X going. I'm just excited that I've got a plan for this quilt top because <clears throat> it's been sitting here so long, I just never had a plan. And I did have one plan at one point, but it involved applique, and I'm just not much of an applique girl. And so, although it was a plan, I didn't love the plan. But now that we have this idea to do to make it for Craig, I'm just like super excited about it. And I was gonna do, I've had that idea for a little while. But I still never did it because I just didn't quite know how I was going to approach the border when I added his name because I was kind of, I didn't know if I should do like a, what color the letter should be, how I should, um, what I should say in the letters. And then when Calissa told me to put Craig Alexander, I went, yes, of course, that's perfect because then that will kind of match her quilt a little bit. And I don't mind if everybody's quilt is a little bit different, but I like them, I kind of, I kind of want them all to coordinate. Craig actually made a joke one time that he said, well, why does everybody else get a quilt and I don't? <laughs> and I know he was just teasing me and um, he's not um, somebody that would keep score at all. That's one of the reasons why I love Craig, but um, I do want to make him one. I think he'll probably be pretty pretty surprised and appreciative. Oops. There. Okay. Kind of confusing a little bit when you work from one letter to the next letter and you're kind of just bopping between a couple of them but it's not too bad um, one thing that's kind of silly in our town is is that um, I live <laughs> northeast side of town. My daughter, Calissa, we always tease that she lives a zigzag away because you go down the street and then up and then over and then up and then over and then into her driveway. That's how far she lives away from me. Um, it's really about um, six blocks if you um, six blocks and a river because there's a river between her house and my house and there's about six blocks. So it's like the perfect amount if you're going to go for a walk. And so she lives on the southwest side of town. And so we have school buses that come into town and they pick up the kids. If you live on the other side of the river, which is to the east of, no, the west of me, if you live on that side, the bus picks you up super early in the morning, like seven o'clock in the morning. And if you live on my side of the river, the bus doesn't pick you up till between 7.30 and 7.50, about right around in there. And so Calissa will bring the boys. And then in the evening, the kids get on the bus 
or get off the bus. Over there, they don't get off the bus till like a quarter after four. And on this side of the river, they get off the bus at 3.30. Well, her boys are little, and so it's a long time for them to be on the bus. So what she ends up doing is, is she has the boys get on the bus at her house at seven in the morning, and they get off the bus at my house at 3.30. And that way they don't have both long rides on the bus route, they only have a long route in the morning. And so that's kind of something that we've kind of worked out so that the boys don't have to be on the bus super long. And I'm always home anyway, and I've got the other girls coming off the bus, so it doesn't matter if they come off my at my house. And that way they get a treat from Grandma before they go home, and they enjoy that. And I enjoy seeing them too. We've been having a, I would call it a pretty mild winter. We've had a few um, blasts of snow or yeah, snowstorms. Nothing super a lot, um, but a few blasts of snow, which is not always my favorite, but I do live in Iowa and it is winter. So that's just part of the, um, part of the price of living in Iowa in very much in farm country. Okay, I've got this green one. I'm going to add him in. Because <coughs> the my quilt has pretty busy prints, and so this one's kind of a busy one. It's got green stripes in it. I'm going to toss that one on, even though it is pretty busy. That's okay. I had told you that I don't have a lot going on this week, so I thought I was going to get quite a bit of sewing done, and um, I'm going to really try, because for the most part, I don't have much going on during the week, but the weekend is already booking up to be busy. Um, I think, I think, I'm not sure, um, last time I heard, it sounds like all of the grandkids will be home, and so that means... It's 10 extra kids here or 10 kids here and the kids have a fun time we're planning on going roller skating one day because my kids always love to skate and um they're trying to teach their grandkids or their kids to like to skate in fact my mom and dad met on roller skates back in the day and so here's my ex so if your kid's name was alex you'd be done right now but Craig, Craig's is Alexander. So we have A-L-E-X and then I have the A started. So I'll probably start an N now too. Because that would be our next letter. I'm trying to change up the fabrics a little bit, but I don't really have the best fabrics here. Oh, maybe this one will work. Mm, we'll see. That one might. I want to keep having um, some different prints. And I got to do an N, so I need that angle. Shirt yokes work really good if you're um, making a quilt out of shirts. <coughs> oh, there's that cloth of mine. Okay. Let's see what we got for a piece of fabric to sew onto there. So I think family is going to start coming on Friday night and we'll be here Saturday and Sunday. Um, my daughter Kelly is a nurse and has to work um, night shift, so she might miss out on some of the stuff, but I think I'm gonna go pick up um, her daughter, Georgia. Maybe not Eli and Emmett, but Georgia is three, and so she could easily come with and kind of handle herself um, if we go skating. But the boys that are three, they're a little little to add on to the crew when there's no parent to help them.
we'll see what happens. The roller skating rink we go to is really nice. They have um, like like a walker that someone would use if they were a patient in their uh, resident in a nursing home, a walker like that. They have those, only they're made out of PCB pipes. So the walker is a PVC pipe, and then on the bottom they have wheels. So the kids can use them to help with balance and then um, just give them a little bit of confidence. And so we'll grab a couple of those when we get there so the kids that need those, they can... Um, skate using those. The older kids use those and it works out really well. And then um, for the youngest kids, they have uh, kind of like little cars and then they have a handle up the back and then a parent can skate behind and push the kids while they skate. And so those are kind of cool. We used those last time we went um, for my granddaughter, Lily. And she, she just had the blast. And it was so fun to watch her having fun. Okay, I'm not going to use that piece because I think that was from the collar of the shirt. And it kind of, when I aired it, it had a uh, funky smell. So we're not going to use that. This one's good, though. going right here now. I'm kind of feeling good about how it's going. I'm going to use one of these wider pieces. I've got wider pieces and narrow pieces when I make the letters and a lot of times um, the beginning letter, the, the first stroke of the letter, I use a wider fabric. Not always, but sometimes I do. Okay, I've got another A done. Okay, as I get each one of these letters done, I'm feeling a little more pressure to figure out what I'm gonna say in other words. Because remember I told you in the opening that um, I um, needed to figure out something else because Calissa's quilt said dream big on the other side. And so I have another A done. And I got the N going, and I have to start a D. <coughs> oh, that cough's getting the best of me. Okay. And some little triangle pieces to round the D out. I myself am not a skater. My parents tried to get me to be a roller skater and I just, I never took to it. And I just, I didn't like to fall. <laughs> I've, I've always been kind of a careful girl and um, I didn't like to fall so I didn't like to skate because I would fall. <laughs> uh, kind of wimpy I know, but that's totally okay. Um, And my parents did, they took me several times to roller skate and it just never caught on. My brothers could always skate and um, I don't even, I'm assuming my sister skated, but um, my sister's 16 years older than me. So I don't always know uh, because I don't remember her living at home. Um, I think she skated. Yeah, I can't, um, I had a, I have a brother that's 11 years older than me as well, and I don't really even remember him living at home either. My memories of home just kind of were my two, my two brothers that are closest in age to me, 
and me. That's mainly what I remember. And um, I also had uh, nieces and nephews that lived real close. And I remember them being there because they were only just a little bit younger than me. And so I totally remember them way more than I remember um, their parents. So, yeah. I, I remember going up in the attic and digging around and my dad had his skates up there because he owned his own skates. And he had big pom-poms on the end of his skates. I always thought that that was the coolest thing ever, that my dad had pom-poms on his skates. Isn't it weird what you remember and don't remember uh, growing up as a kid? But that's one thing I do remember is my dad's skates. My biggest memory about skating was going to the roller rink and then um, my I had my the skates on and I was so scared to skate I would stand in between the coat rack and I would skate from one end of the coat rack hanging on and then I would skate just a little bit further because it wasn't, you know, it was only about this far, but I would skate and I'd grab the other end of the coat rack. So I felt like I was skating even though I really wasn't. And nowadays, my desire to skate isn't that, isn't that big. So instead of skating when I just go with whenever everybody when they're skating because I watch and help with the kids to oh if somebody does fall down they come and sit with me for a little bit or we do something like that and with 10 kids going or even if only eight go it's still a needed thing because the oldest grandkid is seven and so there's always somebody who fell down and is feeling kind of bad. And so a grandma is always needed. <coughs> oh, that ticklish cough. Okay, I need a longer piece to go along the side here. Oh, that one could work. We're really fortunate in our area. Skating isn't very expensive either. So I think I think last time a whole crew of us went. I think there was probably I'm trying to think. Um five of us who went, and it was only like twenty dollars. So there's not much you can do anymore nowadays that only costs twenty dollars. I was telling my kids when I was growing up there used to be a bus that came into town from the roller rink and the bus would pick us up and drive us to the roller rink and um, I thought that was always pretty neat so here's the N you can tell my N ended up a little bit smaller but this is a wonky quilt so it's okay if the N is smaller I might have to uh, add another row of border onto it because it is quite a bit smaller so I'm gonna probably do that right now because I'll need to later if I don't do it now I just soon get it done. So when I do come times to trim, to trim, I can just trim it and it'll be ready to go. I started out wanting my letters a little bit smaller and it looks like they've all kind of grown, which is totally okay. It just means the quilt will be a little bit bigger. That's one thing I love about improv is that you just, if something's different or strange, you just um, go with it. Okay, I'm working on my D. I remember my brothers went skating a lot and they often got on the bus. And I said something to my kids one time is that that's how we used to do it, is that the bus used to come into town and people would jump on the bus and the, the skating rink sponsored the bus and they brought the kids to the rink. And they said, well, how old were you when kids did that? And I said, well, as long as you were like 
six or something, you could probably go on the bus and go skating. And my kids were just shocked. But, you know, back then, that was pretty normal. People didn't worry about um, strangers and bad people. And so it wasn't a big deal that kids, like, went to the score skating rink when they were that young by themselves, more or less. Yeah, I don't know. It was just a different time. But my kids were just super shocked about that. Okay, working on my D. I'm getting so excited. I think you all know the feeling of having a quilt and kind of having it stall out and not know for sure what you're going to probably do with it. And then suddenly the idea strikes and you're just like, yes, this is how it's going to go. That's really where I'm at with this quilt. I'm just really super excited because the idea is here and I think it's going to work and I think it's going to be a good idea. And I've been doing the um, Country Threads Dirty Dozen, and so I made a list of my UFOs that I have, and I've been working on getting them done. Well, they kind of took off and didn't announce the projects that we're supposed to be working on for the last two months, so I kind of floundered and didn't really do a lot. <laughs> And they said that we could just, you know, work on whatever we wanted and um, not worry about it. And, well, without, <laughs> without that regular guidance, I kind of really have floundered and haven't gotten anything done. So hopefully I can, like, pour it on and finish up and at least end well. If I could get this one done, I would just, I'd feel like I was kind of caught up and not floundering quite so much with that project. Okay, so I ironed some stuff and I still don't know what I'm doing. Oh, here, let's use this piece. <clears throat> I'm going to mold it down here, I think. What a mess. I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. I think I'm trying to work on too many letters at once. Even though I am only working on two, but <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes when I think I have a when I have a cold, I think I'm not quite as sharp as I sometimes am otherwise. And my scraps are just really not very good. I know I kind of said that earlier, but it is totally the truth. I think I need to go in the bucket and see if I can find some more um, light colored scraps. Because I'm going to need a lot to do this border yet too. So I might even have to go into my shirts and pull out a few and just chop some of them up. Okay. I'm getting closer on my D. And my good scissor got buried. You'll have to watch the blog to see how far I get on my quilt. Or you can watch me on Instagram because I usually post some updates in my stories. Um, today I put quite a few, well, I think I put three Instagram stories out. Maybe, maybe two. I'm not sure. So anyway, I have a little bit of Instagram stories and I usually kind of update what I'm sewing on or what I'm doing. So you can see a little bit there. Oh, here, this is a pretty good piece. You can see a little bit there, which is, um, doing stories is just so easy for me. Because <clears throat> it's a quick update I can do in between other things. And then you can see what I'm up to. When I was working on Anders' quilt this morning, I kind of ran into some trouble because 
um, the tension was bad in my long arm. And then I ended up, um, oh, I don't know, it was miserable because I ended up having to rip out a whole bunch of stitching that I already had in. And that's just never fun. I just hate when that happens. And then it's at a super awkward angle to rip out. And worst of all, I started doing the long arming and thought that and realized it was bad after just a tiny spot of space. And so I only just had a very little to rip out. Okay, and my D is done. Um, so I think we just need E and R. That's pretty awesome. Um, so I ended up having to rip out, and I was just so disappointed that I had to rip out that. Got everything rethreaded again, started going again, and lo and behold, I ended up with trouble again and had to rip out another spot. So it was just not a very fun morning at the long arm. And then finally, I got that ripped out, and I got going at a good clip, and things went a lot better after that, which I'm super thankful for. And then I didn't have too much trouble after that. It sometimes seems like if I have, well, I decided to change the needle and then that seemed to help, which was good. I'm going to make a chunky E, a chunk of dunk. Maybe it'll be a weird looking E, but that's okay. This is whimsy. So I've been with you all almost an hour and I've got A L E X A N D done. Seven letters done. That's not too bad. I've got that R at the end and that's the worst letter. But I've got it started at least, so that's good. Okay. E is really easy, so it's a nice letter to have in between. I think I got time to finish up the R. I'm looking at the clock, and oh, I've got about 20 minutes before the bus comes. But I've got to get a snack ready in between there. But I already know what I'm having for a snack. I've got a brownie recipe that. I just shared on, just wrote a blog post for it, and it'll be a blog post coming up. And it, they're Snicker Brownies. And so you'll be able to check them out on the blog coming up. They turned out pretty good. I think if I make them again, well, I know I'm going to make them again, but when I make them again, I'm going to improv a couple things and do a couple things just a little bit different. Oops, I'm out of thread. Okay. I hate to stop right now. Because wouldn't it be just great if I could finish up? The name Alexander. I am getting a little antsy though. Every time I get another letter done, I keep thinking, what is those, what other words am I going to make? <laughs> you know, I'd, I thought about doing something like you are loved or I don't know, something like that, but I just can't quite figure out what it should be. I'm not very good at that. And I'm not very, not a very sappy person either. So I'm not very good at thinking about about 
nice things to say. I know that sounds really dumb, but I'm just not very good at that. Oops. I'm going to use this from both ends. I got one end into the machine. I'm going to use the other end of this over here. Okay. I'm starting to get in a hurry. I hope I don't make a mistake because that can happen too. So I better calm down. Okay. Come on, R. Okay, I'm gonna see if this will work. <coughs> I really enjoy making these letters. They're just one of my favorite things to make. I'm so glad that I um, just got brave and started making them. I think I was originally introduced to them um, from Bonnie Hunter, um, but she never, I never saw her have a tutorial or anything with them, and so I didn't really know how to do them, and then one day I just decided, what the heck, let's try, and so I did, and that's when I started making them, just because I just, it looked intriguing, and I wanted to try, and so I did, and now it's something that I fairly regularly make. Well, at least when a grandkid comes along and needs a quilt, I make them. Make them or I've made them for a few other projects, too. I've made them for, um, oh, the neighbor girls. I made a quilt for them, and I use these, this style of letters with that, too. See how I'm doing. The R really takes quite a bit longer. I hope you're enjoying the project that you're working on um, as you hang out with me today. It's always fun to have some kind of project and it's fun to have somebody to work with while you're doing it. So I appreciate you joining me. I hope to do more just casual sew with Joes. I've had a lot of people say that they enjoy when I do them because they don't have a stitching buddy or they don't have a sewing buddy. And I don't have one either, so we're all in the same boat. Whoops, did I just drop some? I hope I don't need that. Okay, so the E is done, and now I just need the R left, and that one's in the machine right now. And um, I guess I'm going to start the C because um, I need something else as a leader ender kind of thing. So I can't, um, I'll have to put it like a, what do they call them? I wonder if that's, that's not going to make a very big letter. Yes, I talk to myself when I sew. <laughs> oh, part of me thinks that's kind of normal because, especially when I'm doing letters like these. Okay, this looks a little better. I need the inside portion for the letter C because I'm going to start doing the letter C, being that I need something to feed into the machine anyway. And that will work just fine. Oh, now where did I lose? Oh, I think I lost the other piece to my R. Oh dear. Where did that go? It's not under my feet. Oh dear. Why does this happen? <laughs> I hate when this happens. Well... That might be all I sew with you today because I can't finish my R until I find that piece and I don't know where it went. I think when I did some of this stuff and moved things around, I lost that portion of my R. Well, 
Well, I don't know. I don't see it here. You're probably screaming at me because you can probably see it on the screen and I can't see it. I'm going to, in the meantime, just do a couple pieces to round out the corners of the C, hoping I see it, but I don't see it. Well, I might just leave you in that suspense. <laughs> Are you going to be able to handle it if you don't know if I can find the other piece to my C or my R? So I had already made this top part of the R. I'll show it to you in just a second. I had made the top part of the R and I made the bottom part that comes out here with the little diagonal part of the R but I don't see where it went to. I think it's lost. Oh no. I don't know where it went. So, oh, here it is. Yahoo. I feel so much better because I was gonna be so frustrated if I couldn't find that. But I think I got it, but I don't think I like it. Well, doesn't it seem I ended up using a really narrow piece. I don't know if I like that. Uh, I think I'm going to just use it. Actually, I think I'm going to cut it off a little bit and then use it. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. It'll work. I'm making it work. I'm just throwing... Working on the C as I go, I have no intention of planning on finishing that yet today. But as long as... Oh, and now my needle came unthreaded. Boy, I'm just having quite the luck, aren't I? <laughs> oh, I always like to leave my sewing session on a high note. And right now, I'm leaving it more on a low note. Okay. There, I got it threaded. And we're going again. That's good. Okay. I'm going to trim this up just a smidgen. I think the word is smidgen, not smidgen. But... It's okay. I'm going to put the side on the R. We're getting closer to having that one done. At my other machine right now, I have two projects. I have a um, project that a blog reader sent me. It is a uh, frolic quilt for that Bonnie Hunter did as a mystery quilt some time ago. That one is there waiting for some attention. And I have um, a star quilt that has been a, I think that's my oldest UFO right after the one that we're working on today. And so both of those are at that machine. And I also have at that machine uh leader and ender project that's just some blue nine patches which i'm kind of excited about i don't know what i'm going to do with the nine patches my r's see it's coming together yahoo <coughs> okay i thought i saw some pieces down here when i was digging hopefully maybe one of those will work um yep <laughs> So those are what's on the projects that are on tap for me currently. I have another project downstairs that I need to cut the um, sashing and the border pieces for. And then that one would be ready to get some time into it and possibly get finished. I've got a lot of things going. I just need to get going on them. 
I'm like I said, I'm really, really hoping that this week I can pound out a couple of them. Well, at least this one. I really think I can get this one, at least the top finished. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, one more piece and my R is done. And then I'm going to sign off for the day and get down and get those brownies cut and be ready for when the kids arrive. I don't like to be up here if they're coming in. I like to see their faces when they come in the door because I always know how their day went just by seeing their face. If they're kind of sad, I know they got something that we got to figure out what happened during the day. <coughs> I always feel bad if they feel sad when they get off the bus. So I like to be there and I like to cheer them up and hopefully they can end their day on a better note. I for sure am going to have to replenish this because this is really bad. And I need a lot of white because I'm going to make the border mostly white with a few odds and ends blocks and pieces in it. And so if I need that much white, I'm going to have to really dig and pull and find more white. So here's my R. And on that note, I'm going to leave you. And I've got my letters done for the day. And I'm happy to have Alexander done. Um, next time I sit down at the machine, I'll probably make the Craig's first name. I'll make Craig. And then, boy, I'm getting to that point. I got to decide what else I'm going to make for letters. I just don't know what to make. So I don't want to, I thought about being cheesy and say love you, but I don't know. Do you put that on a guy's quilt that's your son-in-law? I don't know. If you've got some suggestions, please leave a suggestion in the comment section. Um, I just, I totally love and adore Craig. I, he's been the best son-in-law ever to me. Um, he's so helpful to me and he's a good dad and he's good with his family. And I just really appreciate Craig. And I'd like to somehow come up with some kind of words to say that, but I just don't know how. So Craig's really like a third son to me. And so I love him for that, and I'm happy to be making him a quilt finally. So anyway, that's what I know. I'm off to catch the kids off the bus because I got five minutes before they're going to be here. So I'll see you later. Bye.